Okay. Now the actual controls, what we call controls, they're filter controls. They are the same. They have the same kind of functionality as filters, but they're basically for the viewer. So I have several of them here, which I will go through quickly talking about them. This one, the first one is the most common one, a drop down menu. We can apply a dimension to this control and it will list all the values of that dimension for the user to select. Either select some of them or exclude some of them by clicking on these, or just select nothing and include only a couple of them, or search from a country like Germany. Yep. Or basically clicking on one single value to only include that value in the list. So it's very flexible in the way that it allows people and the viewers to choose different values from that dimension. And it will apply it to any chart or component that is present on that page. Okay. Now, do I need to show how to add these by the way? Let's do it just once. For any of these, we click on add control, select which control. The first one was data control. The second was a date range control. And this one is drop down list. We click on it. We choose where to drop it just to be covering everything. But otherwise, everything is there. Controls can be accessed here. Now, the second type of control is a fixed size, which is basically same as drop down. So even here, we can, under the style tab, we can choose it to be a drop down instead of a fixed size. And it basically shows all the values available in a long list, and it doesn't need to be open. It's good when we have just several va values, not so many, and we want all of them to be visible so that the viewer knows what values do they have access to. But if it's a long list of trees, then it might not be a good idea to list all of them. Again, it has the same settings, selecting, etc., searching. Something that is important is that we can apply a metric to the drop-down menu. So in this case, I have country and I have sessions and I can see sessions and I can sort by sessions. It's basically, so sort order by metric descending or ascending. Basically, because there are lots of values in this drop-down menu right now, it helps the user, the viewer, to know which one of these might be interesting for them. So they might take a look at here and say, okay, why do they have these many sessions from Japan? So whenever it's trying, you, you try to assign a metric to a drop-down, think about what metric does the user need to see in order to decide which one of these to filter? It? Is it sessions? Is it user? Is it revenue? What are they interested in? And it can be very related to the questions that you're trying to answer on that report page. It can help you. And also, on what metric do you want to sort the values? So how can you decide which one is more important to bring it up and make it more readily available for the viewer? And even if you apply a metric and sort the values, you can choose for the sake of like simplicity if they don't actually need to see them to uncheck and hide the values. So it's still sorted by number of sessions, but the viewer cannot see it. Also the same applies to the fixed size list. All good about these two? Okay. Another one which I really never have found a really good use for is the input box as a filter. So I can enter a country here like Canada, and as soon as I click outside, we'll apply as a filter and only show me the values for that country or for that value of the dimension. But the point about it is that it is very strict. So it is not contained. It's equal to if I just remove one of the characters, it would try to see and find the values exactly matching that, not the ones that are starting with it or ending with it or containing it. So the viewer should really know what they're looking for, right? It's not really for exploration. And uh, mostly this type of input field is better for receiving the values for parameters from the users, which we will see in the next session. Another one, which is a slider, again, a slider can be used to get values for a parameter, the exact value for a parameter for a numeric parameter. But if we apply it to a dimension containing numbers, not a metric, a dimension 
containing numbers. Now, what is the difference between a metric and a dimension containing numbers? Anyone can help me with that? The numbers in the dimension are only labels of something. It's not, no, you cannot make a calculation with this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Something that we do not call make calculation. Like revenue sessions, users, they are actually metric. But for example, if you are reporting on a catalog of cars, the number of seats in a car is a number, but it's a property of the car four seats, three seats, and we do not add the number of seats on all calls together or average them together. The price of the car is also a property of the car. The number of rooms in the house is a property of the house. And the number of pages viewed in a session is called page depth, and it is the property of that session. This is not the actual number of sessions or number of page views, but each session has a number associated with how many pages did they view in that session. So it's actually a dimension. And now for a dimension applied to a slider, we can set the upper and lower range. For example, we want to find the very engaged people on this website, those who have seen more than 50 pages in a session, which is a lot. See if we have anyone actually doing that. Yeah, so we, we have some people coming from direct viewing actually 50. Do we have more than 100? Oh, 46 users viewing more than 100 pages in a single session. Maybe robots trying to crawl this website, I don't know. But so we can basically set the upper and lower limit of that dimension. And finally, we have the checkbox. Checkbox is either not set, basically meaning I don't care, or it is true, checked, or false, unchecked. And because it's true false, it needs to be applied to a field of Boolean type, a field that is either true or false. Right now, it's a dash, so it means that I do not care. The field that we are talking about is from mobile, which is a field that I created myself. There is no such a field in Google Analytics. So let's see, how do they do that? And how do they ensure that it's a Boolean field? We can see that from the field type, it is like a cross and a... So this icon, so it's actually a Boolean field, but the way I defined it, I just put an logical operation in inside the formula. So instead of a formula that returns something, right? I ask something, device category equals mobile. It's either true or false for each row. It's either mobile or not. If it's mobile, it will be true and it will match whenever this value is checked. So if I check it now, I can only, I'm only seeing the values for where the traffic is from mobile. If I uncheck it, let's wait for this one. If I uncheck it, I can see where traffic is not mobile. So device equals mobile is false. And if I want to bring it back to the, I don't care a state, which is not possible by simply clicking, I have to right click and choose reset. And it will basically doesn't apply this filter to the page anymore. And this is so confusing because as a report editor, I might know how to reset that, but if you're actually using it on a client report, make sure to explain them how to use this checkbox because resetting it to the default value is not really something intuitive that people should know. Any questions about these? 